Assalamualaikum semua Sekarang kita sambung Video yang kedua uh, Untuk lecture chapter 6 Raya protection system okay, Kita masih kita masih lagi sambung uh, Tentang fire extinguisher Jadi lebih spesifik kepada Water type Okay a 9 liter water extinguisher is installed for each 210 meter square floor area with a minimum of 2 extinguisher per floor. Ini syarat dia. Okey, untuk area sebanyak 210 meter square, minimum kena ada 2 extinguisher. Okey. A high pressure CO2 cartridge is punched upon use and a 10 meter jet of water is produced for 80 seconds. Okay. Water must not be used on petroleum, burning liquid or in kitchen as it could spread the fire. Okay. So, ini kriteria untuk water extinguisher. Ini tak sesuai untuk petroleum, burning liquid ataupun di dalam dapur. Ini akan menerukkan lagi keadaan. Next, we move to dry powder type. Okay, dry powder extinguisher contain from one to eleven kg of treated bicarbonate of soda powder that pressurized with CO two, nitrogen, or dry air. Okay, a spray of two uh, to seven meter is produced for ten to twenty four second depending on size. The powder interrupts the chemical reaction within the flame producing rapid flame knockdown. Okay, tu macam mana dia berfungsi. berfungsi. Okay. Dry powder tu akan menghalang chemical reaction daripada terus merebak. Okay, the powder is non-conducting and does little damage to electrical motor or appliances. Sebab itulah dry powder ni sesuai kepada um, Electrical ataupun elektronik okay. uh, Deposit of powder is left on the equipment Ini adalah uh, tradis advantages lah okay. So equipment awak tu akan kotor sikit Next We move to chemical form type Chemical form type is formed by chemical reaction between sodium bicarbonate and aluminium sulfate that is soft in water in the presence of a forming agent. When the extinguisher is inverted, the chemicals are mixed to create form under pressure which is forced out of the nozzle. Okay, ini sebelahnya ialah uh, gambar tentang chemical form extinguisher so kat tengah tu yang ada ini silinder ini silinder ni yang ada chemical yang boleh disoft kepada water so di luar ini silinder ni ialah outer silinder ok that also contain chemical dissolve in water next carbon dioxide type Okay, tengok dia lain sikit dekat sini Sini kita ada discharge deep tube Di mana di situ ada carbon dioxide liquid Okay And Okay Kemudian kita tengok Okay pressurize Carbon dioxide extinguisher Leave no deposit Okay keyword dia kat sini and are used on small fires involving solids, liquid or electricity. So, tak ada uh, deposit dekat equipment kita berbanding dengan dry uh, powder tadi. They are recommend for use on delicate equipment such as electronic components and computer. So, macam tadi kotor lepas you dah sembuh kan? Yang ni, carbon dioxide dia akan tanpa kesan. The CO2 vapor displays air around the fire and combustion cease. Okay, macam mana dia function? And then, there is minimal cooling effect and the fire may restart if high temperature have become established. 
water cooling backup is used where appropriate. Okay, ini nak add disadvantages. Okay. Seterusnya, kita akan pergi to type of firefighting equipment for a building. Okay. So, as you can see from this table, we have two types of firefighting equipment which are non-fixed type and the second is fixed type ok so kita go through what is non-fixed type the example is fire extinguisher fire blanket sand, pails and etc ok so daripada sini you all boleh nampak maksudnya tak Tak tetap lah kan Fire extinguisher ni boleh berubah-ubah Dia boleh ubah-ubahkan tempat dia Sama juga dengan fire blanket okay. Boleh bawa ke mana-mana kan uh, Sand Pails and etc okay. Tak tetap Sebab dah siap bangunan Dia boleh ubah-ubah okay. Okay. Uh, And fix type Example uh, Sprinkler Heat and smoke detector Fire alarm and break glass, hydrants, wet and dry riser. Okay, so fix type ni. Okay, seperti nama dia lah, fix kan. So sprinkler, heat and smoke detector, masa dan design bangunan tu, kita memang dah tetapkan dia berada kat mana. Okay, tempat dia kat mana. So tak boleh berubah-ubah. Okay, we move to equipment. Building are protected against fire most effectively by protective sprinkler system. Okay. In most sprinkler system, water circulate through overhead pipes whose outlets are normally closed. At high temperature, the outlets open, spraying water on the fire. Okay, ini adalah how sprinkler works. Okay. So, ada overhead pipe dekat atas Kita yang kita nampak kalau merah tu And outlet dia are normally close Okay, bila temperature tinggi Maksudnya, bila ada api Dan semakin panas So, sensor Kat situ ada sensor Okay, kat mana sensor dia yang kalau merah tu Kalau kita tengok sprinkler Ada macam bug merah tu Okay, bila bak merah tu detect high temperature dia akan pecah and the outlets akan open and spraying water on the fire. Okay, so it how it works lah. Okay, most large buildings also provide water for fire system through a standpipe system with hose connection on each floor. Okay, so macam mana air nak sampai ke sprinkler system tu? ialah akan ada tangki khas untuk fire fighting. Okey, macam mana nak bezakan tangki untuk fire fighting system dengan tangki air biasa? Ada beza. Okey, so kalau tangki air biasa kalau you perasan dia warna biru. Okey, kalau tangki air untuk fire protection system dia berwarna merah. Okay, so perhatikanlah bila you are jalan dekat kampus Ada jumpa tak tangki warna merah Ada jumpa tak tangki warna biru okay, Ataupun you pergi lawatan industri nanti You tengok dekat, uh, dekat kilang Ada nampak tak tangki warna merah So tangki warna merah itu adalah untuk fire protection system Okay Okay so still for sprinkler system a fixed water spray nozzle mounted on the ceiling with a series of water piping connecting to it. Ini yang you nampak dekat atas kepala you dalam kelas tu. Okay. Ada distribution pipe, ada springer, ada range pipe, ada riser. Okay. So, setiap jarak tu adalah standard daripada satu sprinkler ke satu sprinkler. Okay, so nanti bila you uh, jadi engineer, you nak design fire protection system, ada standard dia. Dalam satu keluasan bilik kuliah tu, berapa sprinkler yang you nak guna, tu semua 
kena ada calculation ok so wet system the simplest and most widely used application ok the pipe work is permanently charged with water and it is only suitable in premises where temperature remain above zero although small section of exposed pipe work could be protected by trace element heating next the maximum number of sprinklers on one control valve is 1000 next Okay, tadi wet system. Next, we move to dry system. Dry system is used in unheated buildings. Okay, less than zero Celsius, such as warehousing. Charge with compressed air at moderate pressure. The maximum number of sprinkler on one control valve is 250, but this may increase to 500 if the air controls includes an accelerator. Okay, next system is alternate wet and dry system used in buildings where freezing is likely occurred during winter months. Okay, so you all kena tahulah bezakan kegunaan uh, wet system and dry system. Okay, next kita fokus kepada sprinkler head okay so the first type is quartzoid bulb okay so you already tengok dekat youtube lah kalau nak lebih jelas gambar dia so kalau untuk quartzoid bulb ni uh, beza sikit bulb dia dengan jenis yang lain Okay, sekejap lagi kita tengok jenis yang lain macam mana pula. Okay, it is a glass tube is used to retain a water bath on its setting. The bulb or tube contains a colored volatile fluid which when heated to a specific temperature, expand to shatter the glass and open the bath. Okay, bila ada detect suhu yang tinggi, dia akan pecah dan air akan keluar lah. Okay. Water flows on to a deflector. Okay, deflector kat sini. Dispersing as a spray over the source of fire. Operating temperature vary with a color coded liquid. Okay. okay. So, dia spray dekat sini. So, uh, color liquid, coded liquid ni ada kat sini. Okay, orange berapa? 57 degrees Celsius. Red, yellow, green, blue, mauve and black ok right next we move to fusible strut ok jenis yang lain pula fusible solid strut type 8 ha, bentuk dekat sini yang lain ok solid strut it has two metal strut soldered together to retain a water bath in place ok two metal Strut soldered, and then a range of solder melting temperature are available to suit various application. Under heat, the strut part to allow the valve to discharge water on the fire. Okay, two jenis yang kedua, and jenis yang seterusnya, Duraspeed solder type. Ah, the basic kit Duraspeed. So the type It contains a heat collector Which has a soldered cap Attached okay, solder cap kat sini ni. Heat collector kat sini And then ada solder cap Di sini When heat melts the solder Okay bila dah panas Dia akan matkan the solder The cap fall away to Displace a strut allowing the Heat to open Okay bila solder dah Cair Cap ni akan jatuh Ok dan dia akan on Produce in a range of operating temperature Ok Right next We move to drencher system Ok 
Okey, denture system ni ada dekat bumbung. Okey, apa tak dekat bumbung ni? Okey. Lepas tu kat sini ialah bawah dia water service pipe. Okey. Also ada dekat window drenches. Okey, roof drenches and also window drenches. Okey. Okey. So it provide water over roof or wall. Ini daripada atas dia akan turunkan air to prevent fire spreading. Okey. So there are two system automatic drencher ataupun non automatic which is manually control valve is open to bring them into operation. Next type of drenches. Okey, kita dah tengok tadi window drenches. Roof drenches and also wall drenches. Di sini ada tak wall drenches? Hmm, tak ada nak dekat sini. Okay, wall drenches ni seperti window drenches lah sepatutnya. Okay, kat dinding. Right. Next, drenches system. Okay, ini dah jenis-jenis drenches. Satu window drenches and second roof drenches and third is wall or curtain drencher. Okay. Berbeza sedikit dengan sprinkler. Next, we move to wet and dry riser. Okay, so the function of wet and dry riser are to supply water during fire and to allow connection of fireman hose to this big tap. Okay, dia macam uh, wet and dry riser ni macam satu piping lah. Okay, untuk setiap level. Warna merah juga. Okay. So, bila uh, terjadi kebakaran, uh, fireman akan guna inlet kat luar dan juga sambungkan post rail dekat dalam ok so divided into two types first is dry riser charged with water by the fire brigade during fire and only be installed where prompt attention can be relied upon from the local fire brigade ok uh, so dry riser is can be used only for buildings less than 60 meter height. Huh? Next. Wet riser. Wet riser is used for buildings uh, large more than 20 story or more than 60 meter always charge with water under pressure fed by pumping set from a brake tank and it duplicate pumps to ensure adequate supply of water to each riser at all time ok so ini adalah gambaran typical arrangement of wet riser ok so ada downs main and then dry valve Kemudian dia akan naik terus eh, uh, demi aras demi aras. Okay, ada drain pipe sini ada drain pipe dan uh, ini ialah diameter hose coupling. Okay. So ini ialah contoh wet riser. Jadi okay, kalau sebenarnya kalau you jalan-jalan dekat dalam bangunan selalunya you akan perasan. Okay, so selepas ni perhatikan tu tak ada wet riser kat bangunan yang tinggi lebih daripada 20 story. Ini okay, contoh apartment, okay, hotel and etc. Next, when we move to host reel, equipment yang seterusnya ialah host reel used by the occupants of the building at early fire only. Okey, ada lebih kurang sprinkler lah. Eh, sorry. Uh, fire extinguisher ok discharge 0.4 liter per second or more at distance 6 meter ok 3 risk operating simultaneously and 
pressure of 200 kilopascal is required at each nozzle next equipment is fire rated door okay, ni yang saya nampak ni kat kawasan tangga especially ataupun uh, antara uh, bangunan antara office ke kalau kat kampus kalau kat kampus tak nampak sangat tapi kalau kat office kat bangunan-bangunan kerajaan daripada ruang lift tu you nak ke office dia akan ada satu slot selalunya kat situ ada fire rated door okay. it installed at building as this again spreading of fire and heat to the opposite area so kalau contohnya uh, fire rated door ni ada dekat tangga kan pintu nak masuk ke tangga so selalunya kita akan letak fire rated door okay. so sepanjang you selamatkan diri daripada tingkat atas turun ke tingkat bawah kawasan tangga tu sentiasa dilindungi daripada uh, api yang merebak okay. non combust timber material internally and higher grade of timber externally nampaknya okay. ditanda fire rated from sirene Okay, tapi adakah dia selama-lamanya tahan api? Hmm? Adakah dia selama-lamanya tahan api? Tidak. Okey, dia ada standard dia. Okey, mungkin fire door ni kalau tak salah saya, standardnya ialah dia harus tahan api selama 2 jam. Okey. Next is automatic detectors. Okay, ataupun kita panggil heat detectors uh, ataupun ada smoke detectors and also gas detectors okay. so it is function to sense of fire at the early, earliest possible moment and give an alarm signal by sending the siren or signaling at control panel in a control room Okay. Alert person inside and near building also connected to the local fire bridge. Groups of fire detector system are heat detector, visible smoke detectors, ionization smoke detectors and also detectors for hazardous situation. Okay, yang ni pun uh, selalunya you akan nampak lah. Uh, contoh kat mana ya? Contoh hotel, ok, dalam bilik hotel pernah tengok kan dia dilarang merokok dekat dalam bilik hotel so kalau you merokok dalam bilik hotel bila heat detector, uh, sorry smoke detector ni detect asap daripada rokok dia terus akan bagi alam kepada control panel ok, sama juga kadang-kadang uh, tandas awam ataupun kawasan lift dia ada smoke detector ataupun heat detector jadi kalau you nak tahu betul-betul application okay, perhatikan kat mana ni smoke detector ni ada kawasan mana ada dalam kelas ada tak dalam toilet ada tak so cari kat mana ok so kita move kepada automatic smoke detector Okay, kita panggil juga sebagai ionization smoke detector so how it works okay. positive and negative charge plate electrodes attract imposingly charged ion an ion is an atom or a group of atoms which have lost, lost or gained one or more electron to carry a predominantly positive or negative charge next the movement of ions between the plates Reduce the resistance of air Such that a small electric current is produced Okay, ni macam mana dia, dia uh, works eh If smoke enters the unit Particle attached to the ion slowing their movement And this reduction in current flow Actuate an electronic relay circuit to operate and alarm okay. Boleh ya, eh? jadi you all kena tahulah macam mana dia berfungsi So next automatic smoke detectors. Okay. 
light scattering or optical smoke detectors so ini adalah light scattering smoke detectors ok and how it works a light beam projects onto a light track into which it, it is absorbed when smoke enters the detector some of the light beam is deflected upwards onto a photoelectric cell ok next the light energizes the cell to produce an electric current which activates the alarm relay okay. ok next we move to heat detectors use while smoking is permitted and in other situation where a smoke detector could be inadvertently actuated by process work in the building example factory okay. so detectors are designed to identify a fire in its more advanced stage so their response time is longer than smoke detectors okay. and types of heat detector fusible type and also bimetallic coil type next we move to Fusible alloy type. Okay, fusible alloy type. Okay, this is the it looks like. It has an alloy sensor with a thin wall casing fitted with heat collecting fins at its lower end. Okay. So here is the fin case. Okay, next. An electrical conductor passes through the center. The casing has a fusible alloy lining and this function as a second conductor. Heat melts the lining at predetermined temperature, causing it to contact to the central conductor. Okay. And complete an alarm relay electrical circuit. Right. Next. Bimetallic coil type Okay, so bimetallic So, harusnya ada dua metal lah Okay, kat, contoh dekat sini Ialah brass and steel Okay Brass and steel So, cool position Dia tak kembang lagi Below hot position Dia akan kembang and touch So, kita baca sikit Heat passes through the, co the cover To the bimetal coil Okay Lepas tu, initially the lower coil receive greater heat than the upper coil. Okay, the lower coil receive greater heat than upper coil. So, ada brush dekat uh, luar, still dekat dalam. The lower coil respond by making contact with the upper coil to complete an electrical alarm circuit. Okay, so dia kembang. Dia kembang. Metal ni akan touch and on kan alarm. Next, automatic fire ventilation. Okay, ventilation. To remove smoke, heat and toxic gases, smoke, heat and gases flow outwards and out to, of the building. Okay, ini dekat atas bumbung ni. You all dah belajar ventilation. Okay. So, it prevents smoke logging, risk of explosion, flash over and distortion of steel truss. So, akan kurangkan letupan and flush over. Open automatically with a fusible link incorporated. Right. Next, we come to conclusion. Most firefighting consists of applying water to the burning material, cooling it to the point at which combustion is no longer self-sustaining. Fires involving flammable liquid certain chemical and combustible metals often require special extinguishing agent and technique betul? kan? with some fuels the use of water may actually be dangerous betul? the three main goals in firefighting are life safety incident stabilization and property conservation ok so 
itulah uh, tujuan utama you design firefighting system okey untuk selamatkan nyawa okey untuk stabilkan uh, kemalangan tersebut dan also menyelamatkan harta benda okey Kemudian okey uh, rules and regulation fire service act 1988 okey ada 9 bahagian dan 63 items okey yang ini kau boleh baca sendiri okey law tentang fire service act okey so we come to the end of the chapter okay. so thank you for listening watching my video presentation so I hope you guys uh, get the idea what is fire protection system and you guys feel free to ask me if you have any question okay so good luck and assalamualaikum